Good evening, this is the Northern Sun Experience. I'm David Brown and the Mustangs rode to the highest peak. Southwest Minnesota State's volleyball team competed in the NCAA Elite Eight last week for the first time in school history. This appearance coming on the heels of knocking off the top two seeds in the Central Region Tournament, NSIC foes Concordia St. Paul and Minnesota Duluth. The Mustangs' first test would come on Thursday as they took on Sonoma State out of California. Mustangs down two sets to one, but they tied up in the fourth. Megan Larson goes lefty to find the soft spot on the other side, 2-2 heading to the decisive fifth set. And in the fifth, Larson would add a little more oomph to her kill this time, slamming it home off the right side. Match point and Larson gets the assist this time, setting up Kenzie Beekman and the Mustangs come back from a 2-0 deficit to top Sonoma State 3-2. They advance to the NCAA semifinals on Friday. And in that semifinal matchup, SMSU would take on Grand Valley State and they would make quick work of the Lakers. Aisha Odin with the hammer down the middle in the third set. Later on, she'd show off her hops, skying high for another kill off the right side. Beekman would get in on the action as well with this kill from the left side. Mustangs hitting all parts of the court in the semis, and they'd finish it off in three as Abby Teeson's shot is blocked out of bounds. The Mustangs reach the NCAA championship game with a 3-0 sweep of Grand Valley State. And that title match on Saturday pit the Cinderella Mustangs against the Spartans from the University of Tampa. Spartans already up two zip, Mustangs looking for one final comeback. It's Beekman off the block for the point, SMSU with an early set three lead, but Tampa, the number one team the entire season, would not be denied. Megan Burke gets it in right by the back line. And then at match point, it's Berkeley Whaley with the persistence. The rebound goes into the net and the clock strikes midnight for Southwest Minnesota State. A wonderful season, an amazing run and a valiant effort. But in the end, the Mustangs finish runner up to Tampa. They lose three nothing in the championship, but a huge congratulations to Terry Colhane and the entire SMSU program. Well, volleyball was one of just several national championships held in Louisville, Kentucky this past weekend as part of the NCAA's D2 Fall Festival. Men's and women's cross country also held their ultimate races in the bluegrass state on Saturday, although you could replace the word blue with wet, very sloppy conditions for both races. We'll start with the men's race where more than 240 runners from the top D2 programs competed. The top finishers for the NSIC both as a team and individual came from Augustana. Harold Carbo, a junior from Norway, finished sixth for the Vikings in the race, while the team itself finished in third. Afterward, Carbo discussed navigating a messy field. The course was really bad. Uh, made it quite a challenge to uh, just not really think about the conditions, but just uh, just stick with our plan. So the course was rough, but uh, it was it was the same for everyone. Here are the top individual finishers from the NSIC. Carbo is in sixth. Billy Brockmuller from Sioux Falls is 17th. While Cougar teammate Matt Horan is in 20th. The final three are Vikings, Adam Braun in 21st, Nathan Haug in 32nd, and Glenn Ellingson in 34th. By finishing in the top 40, all six runners earned All-American honors. As far as team results go, Augie, as we mentioned, finishes in third, while the University of Sioux Falls finishes eighth. Minnesota State Moorhead finished in 26th place. Let's move to the Women's Cross Country Championships at Tom Sawyer Park in Louisville. This race also featuring more than 240 runners from across the country. And just like on the men's side, the top individual on the women's side also hails from Augustana. Freshman Leah Seibert finished in 10th place, while the Vikings team finished in 5th. Seibert was the only freshman to finish in the top 10, and she discussed that accomplishment afterwards. I wasn't really sure what to expect with the conditions these past few days. The course was super muddy, so you just had to be really mentally prepared for it. And Tracy really focused on being motivated to just push through it. So I kind of kept that in my head th throughout the whole race and just pushed through the mud knowing that everyone else was doing it too. So I felt really good and I'm glad how I did. Here are your top women's finishers, Syvert in 10th, Minnesota Duluth Samantha Rivard in 14th, Northern State Sasha Hovind in 15th, and UMD's Emily Trost in 18th. Outside the top 20, Alexis Zeiss from U Mary is 21st, the Bulldogs Brianna Colbinson and Hannah Olson finish 25th and 27th respectively, Augustana's Annie Cruz is 36th. 
All eight of these runners earn All-American status. Now, as far as the team results go, Minnesota Duluth finishes in third, Augie's in fifth, and Winona State is in 17th. Congrats to all NSIC individuals and schools on a successful cross-country season. When we come back, two perfect seasons were on the line in Mankato on Saturday. Highlights from an epic region championship showdown between Minnesota State and Minnesota Duluth next. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by CU Mortgage Direct LLC, Sanford Health, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience. Two NSIC football teams made the six-team Super Region 3 bracket, and those same two duked it out to determine the region champion. Minnesota Duluth entered the game 13-0 with two dramatic playoff wins, including an overtime victory last week at top seed Washita Baptist in Arkansas. Meanwhile, Minnesota State went into the contest 12-0 with their overtime playoff victory over Pittsburgh State last week. The two would battle it out in Mankato and somebody had to lose on Saturday to determine who would go home and who would move on to the D2 semifinals. Mavs up 10-3, but Duluth's within striking distance. Drew Bauer gets in on the keeper. We're tied at 10 going into the second half. It's now 13-10 MSU in the third when Ricky Lloyd finds Bryce Duncan. He does the rest. 11-yard score makes it 20-10 Mavs. Just one minute later, Minnesota State strikes again, only this time with the deep ball. Lloyd finds Dorian Buford, 46 yards on the pitch and catch. 27-10, Mavericks in control. But the Bulldogs would counter later in the third. Bauer to Taylor Grant, 20-yard connection, cuts the lead to 27-17. Yet that would be as close as the Bulldogs would get. Connor Thomas gets in with his two-yard run in the fourth. And then Chad Zastro gets in on the ground later in the period. Minnesota State wins the battle of the unbeatens, 44-17 over Minnesota Duluth. They haven't been here since 06. Uh, we both finished the season undefeated, so I think that fueled our fire for us to come out here to compete to show who's the true champion. We knew it was going to be a hard-nosed game, and uh, we were able to pass early, then uh, establish a run game, and then do a little bit of both. It was uh, big. When you have two teams that are in the opposite bracket of the NCAA playoffs within the same region, within the same conference, and they both surface, I, I think that uh, when the pairings came out that a lot of people probably didn't expect that and I think we both probably felt we were slighted, Coach Weesey and the Mavericks, uh, you know, so I think both teams did a great job of getting to the regional championship and uh, it was a great opportunity for both teams to compete that never had a chance to see each other during the season. So it, it was great to, uh, to face a, a conference rival and come out on top today and we're pretty happy about it. Minnesota State is now one of four teams remaining in the D2 playoffs, and they'll get to host their semifinal game this Saturday, December 13th at 2 p.m. They host Concord University out of Athens, West Virginia, and like the Mavericks, the Mountain Lions are also 13-0. We'll have highlights and reaction from that contest on next week's episode of the Northern Sun Experience. Meanwhile, the University of Sioux Falls took on Central Oklahoma in the Mineral Water Bowl on Saturday, and the Cougars had something to prove from the get-go. John Tidwell returns this punt 55 yards to the house, 7-0 early in the first. Later in the quarter, Nephi Garcia goes up the left side for a 9-yard touchdown, and it's 14-0 coup. End of the first, it's now 14-3 when Garcia shows off his arm. The halfback option pass to Josh Angulo, 69 yards, 21-3 Cougars up after one. Second quarter and the highlights just keep on coming. Luke Papillion up top to Angulo. Ridiculous one-handed catch for the score. 25-yard strike makes it 28-3 at halftime. Third quarter, the pedal stays firmly on the gas for USF. Papillion to Angulo again. Another 25-yard strike. 35-3 at that point. And Sioux Falls making a statement after not making the D2 playoffs. They capture the Mineral Water Bowl over Central Oklahoma, 42-10. to When we come back, we'll switch gears to women's basketball, where the top two teams in the preseason coaches poll duked it out in St. Paul. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by CU Mortgage Direct LLC, Sanford Health, and Dakota Land Honda.
Welcome back. Heading into this season, only two women's basketball teams received first place votes in the preseason coaches poll. Concordia St. Paul received 10 of those votes, while Wayne State received the other six. Those two squads would face off for the first time this season on Friday night in St. Paul. Great ball movement early on from the Golden Bears as Annika Whiting slips down low for the wide open layup. She had 14 on the night. Second half, Concordia playing a little defense as Sadie Murren's shot is swatted away by Amisha Carney, but it would be Wayne State's defense late that would seal a victory for the Wildcats. Jordan Spencer taking it away from Whiting there, a couple of key steals, and Wayne State would top Concordia St. Paul 60-57. to Northern State was hoping to remain undefeated as they hosted U Mary. This is Paige Watashik nailing the three. She had 13 on the night. But Megan Mutchler was hitting absolutely everything on Friday. Here she gets the friendly roll on the corner jumper. And then a little bit later, more friendly bounces for the senior. She had 24 points on 11 of 15 shooting. And the Wolves topped the Marauders 80 to 53. Winona State looking to take care of business on the road at Southwest Minnesota State. First half, Connor Nagel works the give and go and hits the three. She had 14 for the Warriors. Later in the first, Winona State moves it back inside. Jenny Weiland drives in for two. The Warriors may have been in Marshall, but they were getting some friendly home bounces like these right here for Tara Roloffs. And the Warriors take care of the Mustangs, 79-55. Upper Iowa visited Sioux Falls on Friday. Persistence pays off for Allison Klostergaard as her second putback attempt goes. Two of her four offensive rebounds. Later in the first half, Cougars in transition as Taylor Varsho finds Sam Connect for the easy lay-in. And then USF starts to work things from the outside as Marie Malloy nails the three from the right elbow. She led all scores with 20 on the night as the Cougars top the Peacocks 86-56. On Saturday, St. Cloud State visited Minnesota Crookston. Golden Eagles working things in transition as Alexa Thielman corrals the long pass and scores. She had 18 to lead Crookston. But the Huskies would come right back. Lexi Peterman, the cross-court pass to Carly Jeffrey for three. A back-and-forth affair would eventually go St. Cloud State's way as they remain undefeated with a 67-62 win over Minnesota Crookston. Concordia St. Paul would try to avenge their loss to Wayne State against Augustana on Saturday. Once again, it's preseason player of the year Annika Whiting getting room inside for the lay-in. She led the Golden Bears with 18. Later, it's Whiting getting more room inside, somehow getting the layup to go. She's darn near unstoppable when she gets it in the post. But this game would be a battle with the Vikings. Sophie Kinney driving inside for the easy bucket. She had 11 for Augustana. Then Shantiva Ashley, the former Sioux Falls Roosevelt standout, driving for two plus the foul. She led all scores with 19. But in the end, the Golden Bears would sneak by. In transition, Amisha Carney finds Venetia Harris for two. And Concordia wins this one, 78-77. When we come back, Wayne State point guard Tyler Nagy had some familiar company with him on the court last Wednesday. How the freshman handled a family affair in South Dakota next. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by CU Mortgage Direct LLC, Sanford Health, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. Wayne State point guard Tyler Nagy is already making an impact as a freshman, averaging more than 10 points in nearly 25 minutes per game. And while the game has come fairly easy through the first part of the season, last Wednesday Nagy faced a challenge he's never seen before, playing against a Division I opponent in South Dakota State. That's a team that just happens to be coached by his father, Scott. The mindset before a game varies from player to player and coach to coach. But for Wayne State point guard Tyler Nagy and his father, South Dakota State head coach Scott Nagy, this game provides no peace of mind. Certainly it's, it's uh, something that I don't, I don't know if I'm overly looking forward to uh, because there's, for me there's enough pressure with every game as it is and so to have your son on the other team just changes things a little bit. I know he's dreading this game, at least that's what he told me, so he's probably not in the mood. As the son of SDSU's 20-year head coach, Tyler knows Frost Arena in Brookings inside and out. I think that, that it's, it's probably a big game for him. He's probably taken as many shots in his gym as any of our players have. It feels so good to just be back here. Uh, it's the gym I grew up in, shooting in every day. Uh, a lot of emotions, uh, can't wait to get out there. Preparing for this game wasn't easy for the elder Nagy. 
so he tried to treat his son as just another opponent. We'll try to take whatever his weaknesses are and uh, accentuate those and uh, take away his strength just like we would any other player. It's weird to think that there's kind of scheming against me. The assignment for scouting Tyler was given to SDSU assistant coach Joe Kravinoff, although he didn't exactly want the job. Our staff uh, fought over uh, who was going to get the scout because none of them wanted the scout. They, they, all, they were all hoping that, that I would give it to somebody else and so uh, I, you know, I gave this to the scout to Coach Krabenhoff, so he's the one that has to write up the scout for my son and his team. We kind of joke about it. Uh, he says he's not going to let me score, but uh, I'm going to do my best to make sure maybe he's wrong about that. In the end, Tyler did end up proving his father wrong by scoring six points. But the Wildcats fell to the Jackrabbits 89-55. And while the experience of father versus son was certainly unique, after the game, both Nagy seemed kind of relieved. During the game, I didn't even really, uh, I'd forgotten all about it. We were just playing basketball and didn't really focus on him. So, you know, we were, I was able to do what I needed to do during the game. Yeah, it was fun while it lasted. Once I got going, it was just another game. The box score and stat line were of little consideration for the Nagy's. In the grand scheme of things, the game wasn't really that big. But the big picture for coach and player and father and son was crystal clear. I'm proud of him, and uh, you know they're they're young. They're really young. I mean, it's one of the few teams younger than us, and so uh, it's going to take them a little while, but they'll be good before they're done. That's a big adjustment. I can tell you that it's a lot different than high school, uh, but we got a young team, and I think we're going to be good. Now, despite the victory, Scott Nagy did admit that his wife and Tyler's mother was probably rooting for Wayne State because he claimed she said he's blood and you're not. Well, moving on to the rest of the basketball slate, one of the hottest teams in the league right now is Minnesota State Moorhead. The Dragons were 8-0 heading into this past weekend as they battled Minot State on Friday. Dragons in transition as Prescott Williams gets the lay-in to go. He had 10 on the night. Later, more transition baskets as Matt Nelson slams it home for the Dragons. Some great balance scoring all around. Six guys in double figures, led by Tyler Vaughn's 15, three of those coming there and the Dragons move to 9-0 with a 99-64 win over Minot State. A couple of the top teams met in Mankato as Minnesota State hosted Augustana. This is a Sem Marai with the lefty hook. He had 25 for the Mavs, but Augie would keep it close. Daniel Jansen hits the corner three. He also had 25 points, but Minnesota State would prove to be better on both ends of the floor. Zach Monahan gets the steal, goes coast to coast for the lay-in as the Mavs topped the Vikings 81-67. Winona State traveled to Marshall to take on SMSU Friday. This is the Mustangs' Cole Martin with some nifty moves on the baseline to get the floater. He had 10. Later, Winona works it from the outside as Connor Masberg hits the three from the right elbow. He had 11 to lead the Warriors. Later, it's Masberg working things inside as he drives and hits the tough floater. A back and forth affair all game long. But in the end, the Mustangs would prevail. Mitch Wegg gets the putback. He would also score the game-winning layup in the final seconds. SMSU tops Winona State 61-60. On Saturday, Moorhead tried to remain undefeated against U. Mary. That's Jermaine DeCoste with the reverse layup for the Marauders. But this would be the Jordan Ruer show for the Dragons as he hit six three-pointers on the evening. 24 points to lead all scorers, and don't look now, but Minnesota State Moorhead is creeping up to the top of the conference. They improved to 10-0 with an 81-63 win over you, Mary. When we come back, it's DB's Picks, my top five plays of the past week in the NSIC. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by CU Mortgage Direct, LLC, Sanford Health, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. It's time for the best of the best, the top five plays of the past week in the NSIC. At number five, we head to Marshall, where Cole Martin maneuvers in tight spaces, going between his legs to create some room for the floater. Check it out one more time. The Mustang finds himself a pocket and makes the floater over three Winona State defenders. SMSU would defeat Winona State 61-60 as Cole Martin gets play number five of the past week. At number four, we head to Mankato, where Dorian Buford continues to provide beautiful catches for the Mavs. This 46-yard touchdown gave Minnesota State a 17-point lead in its region championship against Minnesota Duluth. The Missouri State transfer has done it all for the Mavs this season. 
and plays like this helped MSU reach the Division II semifinals. The Mavs are in the Final Four, with Buford's touchdown coming in at play number four. For number three, we go to the Mineral Water Bowl, where Sioux Falls pulled out all the stops. Luke Papillion to Nephi Garcia to Josh Angulo, 69 yards on the halfback option pass. That gave the Cougars a 21-3 lead, but believe it or not, that's only the second best play from this game. At number two, we congratulate the second place SMSU volleyball team. The Mustang Cinderella run may have come to an end in the NCAA championship against Tampa, but no one will ever forget their run. Winning the Central Region was one thing, but coming back from a 2-0 deficit against Sonoma State and sweeping Grand Valley State proved that these girls belonged on the game's biggest stage. But for number one, it's back to the Mineral Water Bowl where Josh Angulo makes the ridiculous one-handed left-handed touchdown reception. Check it out one more time, USF didn't make the Division II playoffs, but they certainly put on a show in the Mineral Water Bowl, topping Central Oklahoma 42-10 and reaching the top spot of my top plays. Once again, a thank you to all NSIC member schools for contributing their time and video for this week's show. For all of us at Midco Sports Network, I am David Brown, and we will see you next week on the Northern Sun Experience.